It is heartbreaking to watch anyone being evicted from their apartment, whatever the circumstances. It's their possessions being forced out along with them to uncertainty. How many more scenes like these will we see in the weeks ahead and the months ahead? And how can you deal with it if you're someone facing that possibility? Kenneth Barrett is an attorney who often deals with clients facing evictions. Good morning to you, Mr. Barrett. Can you give me what's the best piece of advice you give to someone who thinks they're at risk of not being able to pay their rent or mortgage? I would say first to assess your financial situation, uh, pay what you can, and then reach out to your mortgage servicing company or your your landlord to try to enter into what's called a forbearance agreement or a agreement that postpones your obligations so that you can stay in your home. The Texas Supreme Court, there, at some point in time, there was a moratorium that was in place to stop evictions. That's going to be up. Uh, this week. What does that mean? And does that mean that paperwork can be filed now or has paperwork already been filed? And what, what does that mean in the process? Well, through Wednesday, 1,400 evictions have been filed in Harris County, uh, but they could not be served by constables. Now, uh, or starting on May 19th, the constables can serve the, the, the lawsuits on uh, tenants who the landlords want to evict. That means cases can proceed to trial uh, sometime after that, probably after May 26th. Uh, so this, this, for this process is not really a bam, bam. It doesn't take a couple of days. It takes a little while, does it not? It does take a little while. Typically, it takes up to about three weeks from the time the landlord first files suit in justice court until it's heard by the, uh, the, the JP court. Now, I suspect that the process will take a lot longer because it'll take longer for constables using precautions to protect themselves uh, to serve process. And it will take a longer time because there's this backlog of 1,400 cases that the courts have to process before they can even get to, say, a case that's filed uh, next Monday. So someone who is having this situation, though, if they are thinking they're going to be evicted, um, mm -hmm. other than you talk about trying to make an, uh, an arrangement, if they have tried that and it hasn't worked, um, at that point, do they have any, uh, uh, any uh, opportunities to get out of this eviction? Is there any way to get out of that? Well, they, I always suggest to people that they, if they get a, a summons for an eviction, they go to court and plead whatever case they have. Uh, some judges might be sympathetic to, to, to tenants who are in more difficult positions. And if they decide to uh, give a judgment for eviction, they might give them a little longer under the statute to move out. Uh, tenants also have a right to appeal any eviction judgment. Uh, and so if they appeal, then the case would be transferred to the county court at law and they would have an opportunity to be heard, you know, three weeks, at least three weeks later in the county court at law. Uh, we have a little less than a minute left. It, it, th this is all done through mail or email, internet. How does that happen? Do people get advised? How does that work? Well, the you have to be personally served. Okay. Either they have to leave the, uh, the the petition at your doorstep or on your door, or they mail it to you. Uh, so that that has to happen. Now, the court hearings, at least through the end of this month, can only take place via Zoom or uh, via internet or by teleconference. Uh, after June first, courts are permitted to have in-person proceedings, but we don't know how they will process eviction cases under these circumstances, given that most times a court will schedule 40 or 50 cases at once uh, for evictions, but that situation won't be workable uh, if they try to do that going forward because of the, of the safety risk. So is everything with COVID-19, this is one of those things that's fluid, it's changing, and there's no hard answer to what's gonna be happening. But I do thank you for coming in and giving us some advice for those folk who may be facing this. Hopefully they've been able to take some of this advice to heart and maybe help their situation along. Kenneth Barrett, and thank you. Thank you so much.